guys, welcome back to my channel. Hello if you are new. Today I'm going to be walking you through another one of my Notion templates that I have built and created. This one is my at the gym workout planner tracker Notion template, which I use to keep track of my workouts. I'm not someone who goes to the gym anymore. I work from home full time and I find it easiest to work out at home. So I wanted to build something that would make that process easier and would not only keep me accountable, but keep track of the progress I was making. So that's where the idea for this template came from. Also, I decided that I wanted one that worked in line with my cycle. I built it in a way that I was able to track the type of exercises or workouts I should be doing during particular phases of my cycle. So if that's something you're interested in, please keep watching and I'll walk you through the whole template in detail. So here's my at the gym Notion template. This is what I use when I want to track my upcoming workouts for the week. And to be fair, you can do a month, you can do as far ahead as you would like, but I tend to do a week at a time because that just is what works best for my schedule. But of course, change this up for yourself. Just as a quick overview of what you can see on this template, there is a dashboard down the side, which will take you to the exercise page, the routines page, the tracker page, and your progress tracker page, which you don't really need to go into all that often, but they are there just for easy access. Here is where you can view today's workout and tomorrow's workout at a glance. This I find really useful when I'm using this on mobile, which is what I tend to be using when I'm doing the workouts themselves. Underneath is your progress tracker, which is your personal life tracker from using this template, which will keep updating over time based on the data that you input into this template. And then off to the side, we have your calendar. So I'm just showing you some examples that are in here for now, just so you can see how it works. And down below is all of the cycle phase data. So this is information I have sourced around the different stages of your cycle as there are four phases within the monthly approximately 28 day cycle. Of course, this differs for everyone. This can differ month to month, but this is just the bare bones. The recommended intensity of workout you should be doing during that cycle. Sorry, during that phase of your cycle. So for example, the first stage of your cycle is your menstrual phase, and that should be more low intensity because you tend to have lower energy because of the hormonal changes that are going on. Follicular phase is more medium to high intensity as the hormones are giving you more energy during that phase. The same with the next phase, ovulatory, you tend to have a bit more energy so you can do more medium to high intensity workouts. And the luteal phase again goes back down to low intensity. The workouts calendar is where I create my workouts each week. So I will pop in, you can either push this little plus or duplicate ones that exist. So if we pop into one, you of course select the date, the type of workout that it is. I've only included stretching, strength and Pilates, but of course you can add absolutely anything into here. In more recent usage of this, I've started putting cardio in terms of like, I've added like a treadmill walk or an outdoor family walk, that sort of thing. You can really add whatever you want into here. I've included the cycle phase that I'm currently in. So I will update this day to day based off where I am. And then you can include your current weight for the day if you choose, if you don't want to, you can delete this entirely. It's not necessary for the tracker. The amount of time that workout took and no, okay, ignore the duration. The time in minutes is pulled from the exercises routine database and the time modifier is you're sort of adding on additional or less time that you took than what it should have taken. So for example here, this workout I know should take 28.8 minutes based on the exercises included, but it took me an extra 10 minutes. So I added that into the modifier which gave us our total duration, which works out itself. Again, you can put in the calories burnt into here and it will keep track of that for you. I have put in a URL because this is where I found the workout itself, which is from TikTok. You can put YouTube links, you can put anything. And then if you add it to the My Progress, this is what will pull into your progress tracker. So I'll show you all of that again in a different example. We go into this one, this is upper. This one is strength. We've pulled in another routine and the time in minutes, we didn't take any extra time, so we just left that blank, which means it's just gonna total the time that it thinks it should have taken. And I haven't included anything else. If you wanna skip these sometimes, that's also completely fine. So where these exercises are pulling from is from the routines database. So here is where you can store or build all your routines. So 
for these, I've here created a lower body one routine and included all of the exercises within that routine that I want to do to have completed that exercise. If we click into lower body, you can see all the detail in here. The duration that we think it should take, all of the exercises are here. And then you can also give it a rating based on whether you like it or not. I just found this useful when going back and trying to find new routines I want to do. I will tend to go towards the ones I like more. And this is just totaling how many times you've done this workout based on how many times you've popped it into your calendar. And again, you can add a URL here so that you know where this came from if you've pulled the workout from somewhere else. And this is the same for all of these. This duration in minutes is pulling from the exercises themselves, which I'll show you right now. So if we pop into the exercises database from the dashboard, this is where I've stored all of my different exercise movements. As a person who works out at home with no real schedule, I was finding that I was forgetting a lot of routines and a lot of exercises within the routines. And this was sort of my solution to try and not let that happen. So we've got different exercise movements, the type of exercise they are, the body part that they target, and then the muscle group within that body part they target, and the cycle phase that they are more catered towards. So this is very loose based on whether I think it's high intensity or low. So strength, I tend to associate more with medium to high intensity workouts. That's why they are follicular and ovulatory. But stretching and Pilates can be, well, stretching is more low intensity. Pilates can be either. And that's why they are sort of split over the three. And then down here is where the sets, reps, rep minutes, time minutes is where the duration is pulling from. So I've added how many sets I would want to do for each exercise, the reps I would want to do for each set. I've calculated very roughly how long one rep would take. And this is in minutes. So I've basically done this as small amount of time as possible because one rep on most strength exercises won't take very long. And then the time in minutes is calculating the amount of sets multiplied by the amount of reps, of course. So then in that other routines section, I'll just pop back in so you can see, this duration in minutes is calculating the time of each individual exercise you've added to that routine and totaled it up so that you just have a rough guideline of how long this should take and this i find useful if you have days where you don't have a lot of time if you only have 20 minutes in the day you would go for more of an item like this because you know it's roughly 20 minutes rather than the ones down here that are closer to 30. so this is obviously going to be different each time you do a routine and based on your energy levels that day etc so that is why we pop back into one of the calendar examples. That is why the time modifier is there so that you can change it each time you do that routine, just to keep it as accurate as possible. So all of that data then pulls into your little progress tracker here. So the weight is pulled in from when you first get this template, you open this little example and it gives you all these details on how to use it, but you enter in your starting weight just here. And then every other time you add a weight to the calendar over here, this will pull in the data here and it will work out what your weight was to start with and with how much you've reduced or increased your weight by. It will work that out itself in percentage and also in kilo amount. This also pulls in all the data that you've added in here so that you can see how many calories you've burnt, how on average how many calories you burn per session. So this would be per day. Or if you want to add multiple sessions to a day, then it will be per session, not per day. Your total workout time, which I just find really satisfying as this number just grows and grows and you can see how much work you've actually been putting in. And then the average workout length obviously calculates itself by dividing based on how many workouts you've done. So it is a little bit complicated in terms of there are a lot of moving parts in a lot of areas and inputting all your own exercises might take a little bit of time. But once everything is in, I think this is a really easy tracker to use and just keep a good idea of where you are and where you've come from and how much progress you've made which is what I really wanted to see myself and I hope that you guys like it as well we pop into the tracker page this is literally just the same as the calendar view it's just in a bigger monthly view page so if you'd rather see a big overview without all the other data this would be where you come and there is also a table view if that is more your speed if you don't really like the calendar view you can see it this way instead 
The progress tracker you don't really need to look at because everything is stored here but if you want to this is where everything is kept and where all the data lives and there's quite a few formulas and different aspects that really keep that ticking along. There you have it. That is my full at the gym workout template. So there you have it. That is my full at the gym workout planner. Hope you found this video helpful. If it was a template you were looking at and weren't sure about, hopefully this provided a bit more insight on how you can use it and how you can really customize it to work for you. If you have any template requests or recommendations, please let me know. I would love to build templates that obviously you guys are interested in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel and subscribe to my channel if you want to keep seeing more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.